Okay, wave force, wave storm, wave crisis, Rayman. Oh wait, that actually doesn't exist. Uh. A couple of months ago, when I talked about Ray Tracer, I also brought up a couple of games with the same name. Although it was made by the same company, those games plays differently. But since we already covered that one, it makes sense for me to mention the other one. Three reasons. One, I am a Shmup fan. Two, they just announced Ray's Arcade Chronology, a compilation of all three games, scheduled to be released next year. So if I don't do it now, then when will I do it? And 3. This is Titober, the month where I talk about some title games to give my appreciation. For the first episode, like I said, I will be taking a look at the 3 games bundled in the race arcade chronology. Anyway, you know the drill, let's begin. First up is Ray Force aka Gunlock, aka okay now. Released on January 20th, 1994, for the arcade. On paper, it's your typical shmup, but there's a deep story of this game. Here's a little history. The game is directed by Tatsuo Nakamura. Tomohisa Yamashita is a designer and planner. Hideyuki Kato is the graphic designer. Remember those three important personnel. Back in the 90s, Taito split up their members into three different groups that work on different games, and Nakamura is included in the Kumagaya group with one important rule. They are not allowed to make shmups, whilst the two other groups can do so, which doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter, because nothing is gonna stop Nakamura from making their dream come true. In an interview, Nakamura stated that he got the inspiration from the 1989 arcade game Master of Weapon, which features players shooting air target while destroying ground target with another weapon. Not only just that, he also acquired some idea from Namco arcade shooter Xevious, which is revolutionary for the usage of secondary weapon where you try to aim at ground target with another button simultaneously. Nakamura claims that he doesn't want player to use it aimlessly, so he went with a different approach to allow players to lock onto multiple enemies at once and destroy them. And when you combine both ingredients together, you got a special recipe. Delicious! Nakamura had a discussion with the two aforementioned personnel before handling it to Taito, and you guessed it. Taito is proud to approve that project. So that's the short history of Rare Force. No need to thank me. Let's talk about the game itself, which I don't really need to give a tutorial. Basically, humans created a supercomputer that controls the planet, but of course, it goes horribly wrong, and now it's up to you to stop them. This just shows you how horrifying it can be to let some AI take control of everything. Imagine in our world where we were busy chasing the new technology and then this stuff happened. That will be a bad future, don't you think? The horror is real. Just think about it. Anyway, you pilot a ship, plow through the enemy defense line and destroy the boss. You know the drill, but the gameplay is unique. On one hand, you are controlling the main weapon, which is the laser cannon, and on the other hand, you are controlling the secondary laser weapon. Looks like Xerius, plays like Xerius, but here's the twist. Like I said earlier, you can use the secondary laser to lock onto specific enemies. You will quickly come to notice the fact that you simply can't hit most enemies with the default weapons. And that's where the lock-on technology comes into play. Why does lock-on sound so familiar? Eh, oh well. By using the lock-on technology, you then can target the remaining enemies at the bottom of the screen, and that's basically what you need to do 
throughout the game. While you are busy dealing with the enemies in the sky, you also need to keep a close attention to your bottom too, as you could get yourself in danger. Should you not consider the safety, and if you're bad at multitasking, the gameplay style is pretty innovative for its time, because back then the other shmups didn't do this stuff, but here. You don't blatantly go all guns blazing. Instead, you need to plan everything strategically. Do you want to clear the tank? Do you want to stay where you are? It's up to you. Every stage requires different layers or approach, as the enemy will become more and more unpredictable. Which means you're gonna have to adapt to different situations. This game is simply a masterpiece. I love it. Remember, this is an arcade game. The game will become hectic quickly, which means you obviously won't back off them at one single time frame, and it only takes one small mistake to make you lose the progression. Psst, hey, if you ever feel useless, just remember, I am a terrible schmuck player. Back to the weapon itself, you can manually upgrade them by picking up items scattered by the enemies. Yellow it lets you power up your laser cannon, or you can also get 3 red items to do the same process. Green increases the amount of lock on you can do onto the enemies, and you seriously will need them. And that's about it. Just your lasers and no bombs. And it could either be a blessing or curse. Blessing, according to Nakamura, because the game is inspired by Sirius, and in that game, you don't have any bombs either. So it makes sense to not include them here, considering you have your trustworthy locked on. Cursing is when you are in a dire situation, got nowhere to move, or surrounded by tons of enemies, and poof, you are dead. A bomb will come in handy, but unfortunately, there is none of that here. Ray Force, trust your locked on. Moving on to the graphics, this is where things get interesting. The game runs on an arcade board Title F3 system, a hardware that is not known to be arcade powerhouse. It got some limitations, especially the scaling technique with the background of a game, and to solve that problem, background objects were made to be simple geometrical shapes and cylinders. Some would say it looks dated, but I disagree. In my opinion, it adds another layers of immersion. Considering the entirety of the game are built on sprites instead of polygons, the end result is still pretty good. They were able to perform tasks that were previously seems impossible. The end result does not look jarring in the slightest, which brings me to my next point. There are a total of 7 stages where you begin in space before infiltrating the enemy base. Along the way, you are not alone as you are accompanied by the delicious soundtracks. Soon Tata, the composer at Taito, did an amazing job creating some soundtracks for the game and that fits well with the theme of the game to make you immersed in the world of Rare Force.
these are just some examples that could come up. Those soundtracks seem like they are telling a story and does not feel like out of place. In the end, Rare Force is a phenomenal game that was liked by many and I can see why. The game would then receive multiple ports, including Sega Saturn as Galactic Attack in International Region and Layer Section in Japan. The mysteries have been revealed. Logically, next game in the series should be Rare Storm, right? But wait, there's another game. All Gear was meant to be a direct sequel to Rare Force. The game will feature two playable ships with different types of locked on, and from the looks of it, the game looks mostly the same as the first, albeit with some graphical changes. Unfortunately, it got scrapped and only two stages were completed. What a bummer. Anyway, moving on to Rain Storm, aka Layer Section 2 in Japan, which is released on August of 1996 for the arcade, but we are looking at the PlayStation 1 version. This time around, Rare Storm takes place in a different timeline compared to the first game, but also a new story. Apparently, Earth created something called Star Federation that controls all of the colonies in space. However, one of them started rebelling and now Earth is in danger. So you have to do what you gotta do. Blow those sucker out of the sky. Graphics also undergo major overhauls. From the original sprites all the way to 3D polygons and you could say the graphics does not age well. You might be right but with the introduction of polygons there's more room for improvement and that's what they do here. As you can see here there are so much stuff they added and the game itself looks beautiful to say the least. Each section of the individual level are filled with vibrant colors to make yourself be a part of the adventure. Whether it's on Earth, outer space, or even enemy base, every one of them were able to provide different experiences as you go through them. The level of detail here are much more compared to Ray Force. My favorite has gotta be stage 3 where we are flying past the blue ocean taking our enemies before ending with a boss fight at the waterfall. Now that's how you make an immersive game. Or even stage 5, flying by the asteroid belts while dodging enemy bullets is also an immersive experience. And oh yeah, did I forget to mention that amazing soundtrack done by Sentata? As for the rest, the game remains mostly the same. You have two ships to choose from with two different lock on laser. Something they brought from our here. The first is your standard green laser cannon that covers slightly wider range with green lock on laser, similar to the first game. Blue laser that shoots straight forward that deals with more damage, but obviously smaller range. And the blue lock on laser they destroy enemy with the shape of an electric current, which looks satisfying. Oh, and also there's automatic and manual firing option. Manual mode lets you lock onto enemies and firing them whenever you're ready. And while it's still fun blowing targets by yourself, remember, it's an arcade game after all. And often, you will always find yourself getting busy with the air targets and won't able to focus on the ground targets, which makes things look very bad on your end. Well, fear not. Introducing automatic 
when the game takes care of the lock on and fire ring so you could focus carefully at the game. Trust me, once you use the auto, you wouldn't want to go back to manual mode. And finally, the game also adds a special attack that gradually builds on when you fire an enemy. Works the same as Bomb, which is a godsend considering the absence from the first game. The PlayStation 1 version not only includes arcade mode, but also extra mode, which changes the aesthetic and difficulty of the game, and also 13 ships mode. You guessed it, giving you only 13 ships to beat the game, providing different ending. Trust me, don't try it unless you are good at this game. Overall, Ray Storm is my favorite game in the series, and the game will get re-released for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 as HD version that includes our gear, the ship from the console game, but in the white screen. Now, just now. Alright, one more game to get out in the series, and it is Ray Crisis, released in arcade in April 15, 1998. As usual, we are looking at the PlayStation version, but here's where the problem comes in. The arcade and PlayStation 1 version both have different stories, and it is still confusing to understand each of them. So basically, they created Con Human, a neural network thing that connects with computers around the world while bringing closer man and machine, but then he went rogue and killed most of the human. In a desperate moment, a hacker sent three planes carrying virus into the cyberspace, codenamed Wave Rider to stop Khan Human. I hope no one is confused because this is a direct prequel to Wave Force. Eh, at least the game has one name now. Ray Crisis Series Termination on PlayStation 1! Anyway, this time you can select the order of three missions out of the given five, which reminds me of of Thunder Force 4. Oh sorry, Lightning Force! Aha! You then have 3 ships to choose from along with extra 2 for completing the game 3 times with those ships. The gameplay remains identical as the first two. But here's the twist. There's a new thing called Enroachment that keeps on going up and you don't want that to happen. Ever. To keep it down, you have to pick up some of the items scattered across the area and most importantly, destroy every enemy's appeal on the screen while not letting any escape, which makes the game even more frantic. Not only you gotta keep yourself survive, but also looking after the damn number that always want to increase. Hey, I never see anyone that likes the number going up, unless in exam. You okay there, buddy? You're gonna have to bring all your experiences from Ray Force and Ray Storm to take on this challenge. What happens if we reach 100%? Well, the game stops you from what you're doing now and takes you right to the final boss. And if it wasn't for the online guide, I wouldn't even know that was the bad ending. This game got me confused. While it is fun to lock onto multiple targets, but doing that under a strict pressure can be frustrating, and I'm not the one that can handle too much pressure. Then again, I suck at schmuck, so who cares what am I thinking? As for the graphics, it is mostly similar to Ray Strong, but considering we are in a cyberspace, the game looks quite good with vibrant colors to bring up some aesthetic values regardless of which areas you choose, such as city, water, and desert. How does the music sound like? One word, immersive.
is this what cyberspace look and sound like? That's all I gotta say with Red Crisis. If you play the first two, then you will be very familiar with this one. You can try to find a copy if it's cheap, and there's also this version bundled with Red Storm, which is more worth it. The game is pretty short, and once you beat it, there's nothing else to do, unlike Red Storm. Huh, special mode. What's this? See, even the lizard doesn't want me to play it. Let me just peek. Oh no, 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 no. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, what's happening? Oh no, no! So that's it. I covered all three Ray games, including Ray Tracers. So the Quadruplet series is now in the boat. And I don't have to worry about missing out anymore. See? Even the lizard is proud of my achievement. It was fun looking at those games and talk about it considering those are my favorite genres as well. If I were to rank these games, Ray Tracer and Ray Crisis would be A tier while Ray Storm and Ray Force would be at the top. I really recommend you to check these games because they were the finest project made by Tidal. The best way is to pre-order the upcoming releases of Ray's Arcade Chronology that will be releasing on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. And as a bonus, you will even receive a small bonus where you can play the scrap project that is our gear, granted only one stage available. So this is your chance to get your hands on them and you will never regret it. Okay, the lizard wants to play now, so you should play too. And if you're itching for more games like this, check out Crimson Clover, which was heavily inspired by Ray Force gameplay, and man, it is pretty good. Anyway, that is it for this episode of Titober. Join me next week as we take a look at another title games. If you enjoy what you see, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Comment below your opinion on these three games as you play. Let's have a peaceful discussion. And if you want to follow me while I'm doing, Twitter is where I'm mostly active. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.